edit menu we've got edit grub for DOS or F4 which is something I use quite a lot actually which brings up the menu.lst file on the drive uh, depending on which location it could be in it could be in one of three different locations if you if you read the, um, the manual you'll find out uh, what locations the menu.lst file can be in uh, and the other one is the uh, speed results CSV file which is brought up in notepad um, but you can use F6 or F7 to view the results much more quickly and easily the drive menu explore drive F2 another one I use very often is just to open up Explorer on the USB drive refresh the drive list is the same as this uh, option here uh, test the drive using QEMU which is F11 which is this one make all files contiguous uh, that runs WinContig and makes all the files on the selected USB drive contiguous. Launch WinContig will launch Win, Win, WinContig manually. I'll just run that for you. And you can see that uh, it selects the USB drive but it hasn't actually run anything on it. So if you wanted to you could just uh, run, uh, you can just uh, make one ISO file for instance contiguous on the drive rather than do the whole drive. Um, Drive View Drive Information is the um, Drive Info button. Format Volume. This uses uh, Windows to format the currently selected USB drive. Uh, one of the things you might like to use on this is XFAT. So um, you can actually use XFAT formatting with this dialog, and it will format the the current drive with um, XFAT format. Uh, you can also use NTFS or FAT, in this case FAT, FAT16. And that's just an alternative way of formatting it if you do need XFAT, but mostly you'll, you'll have the options here anyway. Uh, disk Manager, that just runs the um, Windows Disk Manager. So it's quite a handy way of just invoking Disk Manager. Uh, which allows you in particular to assign a drive letter. Um, some operations in RM Prep USB you need to have a drive letter assigned to the USB drive which is shown here. If that drive letter doesn't appear it means Windows hasn't assigned it a drive letter. So you can use the disk manager and console to assign it a drive letter. Disk Doctor uses the built-in the, the disk editor application which is uh, included with RM prep USB. I'll give you a very quick tour of this so just leave this out as it is. Drive 2 is selected which is the USB drive. You can see it's USB drive here um, and the start sector is set to 0 and the number of sectors is the entire size of the USB drive. So the USB drive is that size in sectors 512 bytes per sector so it's drive 2 is 16 gigabytes and if you want to just do a sequential read of the whole drive you can click on that and it will now begin to read all the sectors on that USB drive into a buffer and then throw the throw the data away as it reads the next cluster of uh, sectors in. So that's just a quick test of the speed. You can see it's 20 megabytes a second it's reading this drive at and it gives you an average speed here as well. But the most useful thing about this is you can edit sectors. So for instance if I want to edit the first sector, the master boot record, if I change the number of sectors to 1 change the start sector to, sector to zero, click on sequential read, that's now read the sector into the buffer. So if I do display and edit buffer, this is the um, sector buffer data. And you can see here, this is the partition table, it's just here. It says end of sector data there, and edit sector data there. So you can edit the data in between those two markers and write the data back to the drive. So for instance if I want to make the partition on this uh, drive non-active, if I change that to 00, zero you must be careful to keep the formatting so don't, don't do that for instance it won't work. You have to keep the formatting but assuming that you keep the formatting you can edit any bytes you like in here and then use the write using buffer button which is marked in pink again because it's going to write to the drive. 
and it's going to warn you that it's going to overwrite one sector and it's going to warn you again just to make sure and now it's it's done it and written it and if you want to read that back you can do sequential read and then you can do display and edit and you see it's come back and the other thing you might like to know about in this is um, the search function so there's a search disk function and using this you can search for a pattern on the disk so you can look, look for text either case sensitive or case insensitive search or you can look for a particular byte pattern or you can look for a non byte pattern so if the disk is filled with zeros for instance you can look for a not zero byte or if it's filled with 2e you can look for a not zero 2e byte so in hex format it's not hex 2e you can also look for a byte pattern so if you would look, want to look for a byte of 0, 05 followed by a byte of 31 hex you can say hex 0531 and it'll find that particular pattern search the disk for you and find that pattern so let's have a look for uh, a pattern um, we've got uh, 32e4 so we'll do hex 32e4 and I'll say OK and it says it's found it at address b4 in the buffer so it's there but it's only search one sector um, if you want to search up to the end of the disk um, if you select another drive and then select drive 2 back again you'll get the entire disk length here automatically set for you um, and then we can search the disk again so if we, st if we, if we look from set to start 1 instead of 0 because we will know it's going to find the first one and we um, do search disk again and there it's found one now found 32e4 at address 44 so that's a useful search function that you might uh, you might like okay after that we've got edit disk signature so I'll just quickly show you that that runs RM part USB and it gets the disk, disk signature off the drive which is that you can change that disk signature to whatever you like say OK and using RM part USB it will write that disk signature back again to the drive so you can change disk signatures of any drive uh, clear read only status now this this calls disk part um, it really only works in Vista or Windows 7 um, if you've got a, a drive that's been accidentally marked as read only by uh, by Vista or by Windows 7 or by Windows 8 during installation or doing some other sort of other operation with the with the USB drive sometimes it could be marked as read only and um, this attempts to clear it. it it doesn't always work but it's worth a try if you're having problems with a, a, a USB drive that seems to be um, right protected in some way this setting changes the registry to auto mount drive so whenever Windows detects a new drive either inserted or freshly formatted or mount or, or if it's um, uh, for instance a, a virtual uh, drive been made by imdisk or something like that um, this changes the registry setting to uh, auto mount the drive um, it's uh, up to you whether you use this or not it may fix some problems especially in um, win pe operating systems which might not auto mount drives set windows accessible partition On this uh, USB drive I've actually got two partitions uh, which I've just uh, formatted using EAS, EAUS Partition Master or EZUS or EZUS, however you want to pronounce it, Partition Master. Anyway, I've got two partitions on this drive. I've got uh, the first one which you see is Type-E and the visible to Windows and the second one which is Type-6. Uh, so if for instance I press um, F2 to open up the window this particular uh, this uh, first volume on the drive and it's got some files in it now the second volume the second partition on this drive is not accessible because Windows will only allow you to access the first partition but if you change the partition table order using set Windows accessible partition so you see here um, if we put in uh, number two so if we make number two the first one and I click on OK and it runs RM part USB quickly to uh, change it over. You see it's now changed to part 2 because uh, the volume label is now partition 2 and if I press F2 now this is the second partition so now I can put files on this partition 
do what I want to it, put uh, ISO files on there, or I can have this as NTFS, and I can have the first one as FAT32. And then when I'm finished and happy with it, I can just swap it back again. So if I do drive, set accessible partition, and then type 2 in again, because I now want the, the type E partition, which starts at sector 63, to be the first one in the table. So that will change it over again. Now it's gone to part 1 here. And uh, if I look at the contents of there, I'm back to that. So Windows can now ac access the first partition again. So using that option, you can quickly and easily change which change over which partition you want to access. Bootloaders is uh, fairly obvious. Uh, that will install CRUD for DOS, which is the same as the button. Install SysLinux is the same as this button. Install Wii is um, the Wii. Uh, bootloader is a we is a small grub for DOS bootloader. I won't talk about it here, but um, it's basically like grub for DOS, but very limited in function. But it doesn't have to load the GRLDR file uh, in order to boot uh, a different operating system or, or different file. But it is quite limited in its in its capabilities. If you look on my rmprepusb.com website, uh, there is an article there on Wii and how to use it. And install the standard MBR is a useful one. Um, that will install the standard master boot record to your drive. So that will replace the first set of uh, boot code on the master boot record with standard boot record, uh, standard boot code, which means that um, the code will boot to the first to the active partition. So whatever entry in the partition table is marked as active will now get booted to. But if you want to, you can overwrite that with grub for dos or SysLinux. In the settings menu, um, I'll skip the first three. Um, you, can re you can refer to the website to see what those do. Uh, use all drive modes is an important one. Um, this will display all the drives in your system. So that includes hard disk drives and drives over 128 gigabytes, even if they're USB drives. Um, those drives are not displayed by default in our Prep USB because I don't want you to accidentally overwrite your USB one terabyte backup drive, which would be a bit of a disaster. So I only list USB drives that are up to 128 gigabytes in size. But if you really do want to list all USB drives, click the All Drives button. And you can see here it's now listed my Seagate hard disk drive and my SSD drive, as well as my USB drive. Um, and the second option on here is just list large drives over 128 gigabytes. That's large USB drives over 128 gigabytes. So if I had one connected, um, it would come up here. But the internal hard disk drives are not listed. That's just in case you've got, for instance, a large USB hard disk that you really do want to uh, format using RM Prep USB. Minimize desktop during operation. Uh, Normally, um, you might like to enable this. So uh, what it means is that whenever you execute a, a command with RM Prep USB, it will minimize all the windows on your desktop, carry out the command so you can see any dialog boxes that come up during its operation. And then when it's finished, it will restore back the desktop. This is so that you don't get hidden pop-up windows behind other windows and you sit there waiting for 10 minutes for something to happen before you realize that it's stuck with a dialogue prompt that you haven't responded to. But it's up to you whether you set that on or not. And most of these settings here are remembered by RM Prep USB. So when you quit RM Prep USB, it'll remember the settings. And I think that's a whistle stop tour now of uh, RM Prep USB. I hope you're still awake and thanks.